Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of It Ain't Week to Speak. My name is Sam Webb and this show is dedicated to ending the stigma around mental health through community, connection and the hard hitting truth. I'll be speaking with guests from all over the world about life to inspire and to educate people to speak up so that we can save more lives. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Welcome back to another episode of It Ain't Week to Speak. I'm joined today by none other than the amazing man himself, Sebastian Terry, mate. Welcome. Hi. How are you? <laughs> mate, mate, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm a little sunburned, actually, but uh, I didn't wear sunscreen this morning. No sunscreen this morning, mate, at the oh, beach. Yeah, I went surfing. and uh, Anyway, but that's by the by. I'm really well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to hear, mate. And I just want to kick off straight up just how we met, obviously. Um, we both kind of do similar work, I guess, in, in the space of trying to give back and help people. Uh, I only met you a few weeks ago, actually, in Venice. Yeah. You invited me out to, to your little abode there out in Venice, a beautiful spot at a cafe. Um, and obviously, I got to know who you were, a little bit more about what you're up to, but so that we can share it with guests. And I've unpacked a little bit of your story, and I've spoken to you a couple of times now. I've had the, the pleasure of meeting with you at a couple of spots, and I just want to find out, and we can re- rewind a bit back to when this all started and your journey on, on this mission started. And it all began from what I'm understanding and what you've told me around the question, are you happy? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd never really thought about the question before and I was just kind of going through the, you know, the, <clears throat> the path that a lot of us, especially in Australia, go down, you know, which is you don't really think for yourself. You just sort of you get educated, which is great, by the way, further education. And then, you know, I was, you know, I'd come out of university and I was just, you know, trying to find what it was that would be my future career where I'd be able to get money and afford a house and a family down the line. And anyway, in amongst all that, I just guess a few things happened that just changed the way I thought about everything. One was I got my degree and I remember just thinking, oh, I'm really, I don't feel like that's really filled a hole. I don't feel like that's lit up the path as it was, as I was told it would. So I had curiosity at that point. Um, And then uh, I lost a friend of mine uh, who I'd gone to school with, uh, Chris. And in that moment, when I found out the news that he had passed, Something happened that, that did change the way I thought about everything. And it was, I remember the hypothetical in my, in, my, in my mind at that point was, if Chris could live his 24 years again, would he change anything ultimately? Would he change what he did, how he was, etc.? And I could only think about it, but I don't think he would have changed anything. You know, I think he just lived a life that really reflected his values. And I thought, how amazing, you know? Um, I think he was happy. I just think he was happy being himself. I thought, how special. I then turned that question on myself and I thought, well, if today was my last day, I look back at everything I'd done, would I change anything or am I happy? And I've just never looked at my life like that and I just realised pretty much instantly that I'd change everything. I had no idea who I was. I had no, I had no idea about anything. Um, I didn't know what my values were. I didn't know what lit me up inside. I didn't know what my purpose. I didn't know what I was super passionate about. Um, I was unhappy and, and that was it. And I thought well, that's not good. How do I change that? You know, how do I become happy? In that moment, I just thought, well, the most important thing to me is being happy. It's all I want. I just want to be able to go to bed each night smiling and just knowing that I'm following my passions, whatever they might be. So yeah, I wrote down a list of things that I thought would make me smile more if I tried them. And then shortly after that, I dropped everything in my life, made no sense to anyone with a list of things, a hundred things that I thought would make me smile if I tried them. And and that was that. And that was the beginning of the journey. So yeah, happiness was absolutely the kind of driving force for a, a list that I created and then everything that's happened since. And, you know, we're sort of 10 years down the tr- track now. What mate, so many questions and it, and it's, it sounds a lot easier from what you've just explained. And this list sounds like you've just ah. whipped it out of nowhere. It's been really easy. Where, whereabouts did this list, where did it first get drawn down on? Like, what did you write that on? Uh, I, I literally wrote it on a piece of paper yeah. in Canada. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I what were you on, doing at the time for work? Well, I was kind of, well at that point I was um, I was 20, 24, 25 as well uh-huh. in Canada, and 
I was not helping... Lo- not long out of university, this is? No, I finished university at like 22 and I went backpacking for like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Went back to Australia, had an assortment of odd jobs from teaching surfing to working in bars, like a whole array of weird things that I liked because I was always a bit abstract. And then a friend of mine was starting a, an outdoor inflatable movie screen business in Canada. And he said, come and join me. So I did because I had nothing else to do. And I thought, well, that's kind of, I assume that's just what you do, right? You go and start a business or help someone or work. Or, so I flew to Canada. So that's kind of what I was doing. I was helping a mate in a very kind of roundabout way with his business and um, just working and, you know, hammering in pylons, and erecting these big screens and being an outdoor movie person. It was kind of weird. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, I obviously wasn't so passionate about that, but that's just what, you know, I think a lot of us end up doing work that we're not that passionate about. So that's what I was doing. And then, yeah, middle of the night, I got this phone call from a friend, Jay, from Sydney, and he broke the news to me that Chris had passed away. And I, I don't know, I always, when I, whenever I'm in a, a bind or I'm confused or I really need to think, I get a piece of paper and just write. I just write. I don't know what or there's no process to it, but I just wrote. And I remember, I, I remember super vividly just writing that I was kind of like doodling various bits and pieces. And then I just wrote happiness. I just wrote the word happiness. And to me, I, I, I just, I think there was a sentence that was something like, the most important thing to me is happiness. How do I become happy? And then this idea of a, a list sort of popped up. Interestingly, uh, years before, a friend and I kind of like toyed with the idea of like just creating a list of things and doing them. But it, it, there was, it, it was more for like just, I don't know, just like a creative kind of thought that just came and went. But this kind of, I don't know, it just changed, it reframed it for me. And so I just started jotting down things that I thought would be really cool. Because we all have them. We all have them. They're all in our minds. We just don't, we're not told to think about those things often. We're not told to think about ourselves. And that's something I remember doing. I was like, okay, what do I want to do? So I wrote, um, I always want to marry a stranger in Vegas. <laughs> Why not? Why Mate, not? I saw that one. That, that blew me off my chair when I read that one. And, and then yeah. what, she didn't turn up. <laughs> yeah, she stood me up and I ended up marrying, uh, yeah, I ended up marrying another stranger, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was an odd one. But I mean, it, it's an interesting thing because like I, we all have these goals and dreams and just we don't think about them. We just don't, we're not told to. We're never told to. We're always do your work, do your homework. Um, get out, earn money, do the things, just do the things that we're telling you, uh, you know, and whether it's society or our parents or, or whatever. And that's fine. There's a lot of good to that, of course. But this is the first time I ever went, huh, what do I want to do for no other reason than be happy? And I just, I found that it was very refreshing to at 24, 25, to be able to go, okay, that's a cool idea. But I was also really annoyed. Why had no one ever told me to do that before? So anyway, um, yeah, a lot of weird things came down on this bit of paper. We all have in the recesses of our mind. We just don't often shine the light on them, you know? Why do you think that is? Why do you think a lot of people, especially at 24, 25, I mean, for the most part, most people spend their whole life trying to find their purpose and their passions in life. You know, you were fortunate enough at this age to use something dark that happened in your life as something that was really light fulfilled for not only you, but the people that you're helping along your journey as well. So how does, how does that work out for you? And, and why do you think that is the case for a lot of people? Well, it's definitely true that, you know, a lot of us wait for darker moments to consider lighter moments. You know, we all know someone who's been affected by a loss as you have been. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Someone who's diagnosed with an illness, someone who's involved in a, a motor incident or whatever. And if those lucky uh, people are lucky enough to survive, they're the ones that then go, huh, right, what's really important to me? Why do we wait? I Why do we wait? We don't. Well, we don't have to. Is the answer all that? Because I speak like you do. Speak to plenty of really cool people who have done amazing things, and I ask every one of them, "Why were you able to do that? What was the secret?" And not one of them say because I'm special or because I'm brave or um, because I'm lucky. They just say I gave myself permission, and that for me is it. The secret to doing anything is giving yourself permission. From starting a list, to pursuing a list, to actioning something, to you know, doing something healthy for yourself or other people, it's permission. And that's what I gave myself at that moment. And I mean, why don't we give ourselves permission beforehand? We're just not encouraged to, you know, and I, and I think this, it goes into, you know, I think you can have conversations about generational trends, mm-hmm. the way our parents lived in, in, in their era, and, and certainly, a, you know, generation past them again, entirely different to now. They were dealing with world wars which affected everyone there was great depressions it was really the kind of mindset was more about security and safety and 
bricks and mortar and all those things. And, and, and that's great. But now it's not that. It, the world's completely changed. And so to live by the same, in the same way, it, it doesn't make sense. I mm. mean, it, 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 so our parents, of course, you know, with love, try and teach us what they can. And that's great. But there is room for wiggle room there. But then I, you know, not to get too bogged down in all this, but I think the educational system as well is quite outdated. We're learning in the exact same way that we did, you know, centuries ago. And it's just, mm. that's not how we're, be- that's not how we should be learning anymore. So changes. many schools, just, it's, yeah, curriculum and, that's full of like academia only sports, sometimes music at a stretch, but we're not taught how to communicate. We're not taught how to, we're not taught, taught what to identify our strengths and to use them for our greater vision and blah, 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 blah. So that's why I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. To- yeah. And it made, it's a very, it is a very, I feel like it is a very complex thing and it'd be amazing if there was a quick fix overnight for people to just to get that aha moment, which both you and I actually have to be able to enact it into their own life so that they can live a happier, more fulfilled life. You know what I mean? But yeah. at 24, 25, when you decided to write your list and you mm. started jotting down all these things that you would have loved to, you know, to achieve. And these are the things that you thought, okay, Seb sitting there writing. These are the things I think are going to make me happy so that I can live a fulfilled life. What did your family and, and friends say about this once? Like what were their, what were their first perceptions on this when you, you opened up and shared with them what your journey Crazy. was? Oh, I was, I was crazy. I was, you know, no, no one su- really supported. Um, I, like particularly, I mean, I, I remember my mom, I told her that I had this list <laughs> and she was kind of like, what are you doing? You've got a degree. Now you go into the city. She pointed to the city and she's like, go into the city and get a job and a career. And I remember just going, well, mom, I, if I try that, I'll be super unhappy. I think I wouldn't you rather that I would just try and figure out what actually makes me happy and then pursue that. And her response was go and get a suit. And it was just super, super interesting. So I kind of let, not on bad terms with her, but we didn't agree. And I sort of got that from everyone. Even my best mate, Dave, at the time said, uh, what are you doing? That's so silly. You, you know, cause it was a couple of years after that I ended up actually leaving. But a few days before I left, he said, mate, I just want to tell you, this doesn't, doesn't sit well with me. Like you, you should be doing different things at this point in your life. So bunkering down and, you know, accumulating money and blah, blah. And I, yeah, I don't know. it was the easiest decision I ever made, by the way. So I had no support really. I mean, friends would go, oh, that's kind of cool, but okay. But yeah, so I was sort of very alone and I was fine with that because I knew that it was just a personal thing. I had to go, I had to, I had to try something different. And I also had this blueprint, this list that I was convinced would at least be a really healthy first step. I had no attachment to where it might go. I didn't care. There was no strategy. I just wanted to do things that genuinely excited me, like a kid, you know, like <laughs> creating life with like childlike curiosity and, you know, like I'm seeing the sun out there now. I want to go run out there. Like what, you know, like that's how we should be living. And, it, mm. you know, I, I'm, I'm, I can hear myself rambling here, but, you know, I think the distinction between personal and professional, there's no different. Like everything we do from the moment we wake up or whatever it is we do in the day to the moment we go to sleep should be purpose driven. Mm. Mate, I absolutely agree with you. And, and, and like I, 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 I'm someone who's quite aware with what I'm doing and what I'm not doing and what I, what I should be doing. And sometimes I feel like a lot of what I do is purpose driven. It feels fulfilling, but then sometimes I get caught in that rat race of life of, you know, being distracted and, you know, being caught up in certain things. And then I feel like I am, you know, almost not slipping down the rabbit hole, but I'm almost living in that in that grind again and then i have to be aware to snap myself out of it so that i go hey is this making you happy are you saying yes for a reason or should you be saying no to these things like where do you draw the line with all that especially in your life where do you draw the line yeah well i'm not perfect by any means i mean it's 1 20 now today uh in the afternoon in la and i've done not much work so you know i I, you know i don't feel that um, i don't feel like i've achieved much progress today so i'm not perfect let me start with that but I think that's why if you have, if you have a true understanding of your values, I think your values are the bedrock, the fundamentals to to meaningful goals, personal, professional, within the community, whatever. If you understand your values and you're truly passionate about this, this purpose of achieving, um, that's kind of, they're your guidelines, if you will. You know, when you used to go bowling, like at a 10 pin bowling alley and they, they put like those inflatable sausages down the, <laughs> in, the, in, the in that little alley down the sides, you wouldn't put your ball. In the, bu- in the bunkers. Yeah, so your, your ball would, it would always stay in line. It's kind of like that. Like I feel that if like your values, your goals, your vision, your purpose, your passions, 
Although, if you understand them, they're the sausages, they're the fat sausages that allow your ball or, you know, you as a person as you kind of traverse through life to just stay in the alley. Because you're bound to wonder. You can't always be 100%, as I've proven today. You can't, you know, I'm mm. not 100% purpose-driven, like, right, you know, until this. I love this. I'm, I'm lit up. I really enjoy this because hopefully one person listens and it's great and it impacts them positively. But, um, yeah. How do you stay in the lines? How do you keep going with purpose? Oh, I understand what your values are. Is it- what, are your, what are your values? Well, they change, right? So when mm-hmm. I started, if you were to look at my list now, you'd probably go, oh, this is kind of, this is like a, a thrill seeker, an adrenaline junkie, someone who, you know, like a, a kid. Skydiving nerd, marrying in Vegas, yeah. All the, yeah. <laughs> Jumping out of a plane naked, yeah. walking across a country, learning a yeah. language, living on a deserted island. Yeah, oh, I saw that. All that stuff. Um, but that was back then, 10 years ago, my values were very much around freedom, liberation, adventure, breaking the shackles and try, you know, all that, uh, very much self-exploratory. And then now I feel like I've, I've, I've done a fair few things that have just made me feel a little bit better or whole, let's say. I've learned who I am, I think, on a, on a deeper level. And so now my values have changed. It's not so much about the adrenaline anymore. It's much more about connection and you know, adding value where I can. I think altruism, not to sound too cheesy. Um, yeah, so I feel it's, you know, I my behavior is more insular. It's, um, yeah, I think everyone's kind of storyline is that they must look after themselves to look after other people. You know, when you're on a plane and they say, mm. uh, an oxygen mask will fall from the ceiling, put yours on first, then help others. Well, that's kind of the trajectory of, of me. I looked after myself with my shallow self, you know, indulgent list. And now I'm in a position of oh, true meaning and, and a, a greater good. And I'm still trying to work it all out, but kindness, you know? Yeah, right. So it's okay. So what you're saying is people should feel okay and they should give themselves permission that over time their values will actually change according yeah. to where their life is progressing. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong. As long as, you know, it's great to be selfish, by the way. If that's, you know, if, 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 if that is what you need at that time in your life, it's fantastic. Uh, if you've been selfish for a while, you know, you probably could lean this way to be more selfless. But I think one, like, powers the other, you know. Um, I'd love to be able to say, well, I've always just liked to help people and, you know, like, but I, that's not the case. And if 10 years ago I sort of went off to just, you know, try and create social impact and connect and help people, it would have sounded great, um, but it wouldn't have been true to me. I just mm-hmm. needed a personal thing. So, yeah, um, I think values drive, you know, everything and you know you and i do a lot of keynote speaking for corporates and you know it's the same thing for organizations like we're all the same we're, we're people and together we're a community and mm-hmm. you know from nine to five a lot of us are within a working community and you know organizations are no difference to, to individuals we all need goals and visions we all need to understand our values and by doing that and working you know in alignment in one direction you end up being uh, a happy person on a really simple level or a well-functioning profitable company let's say and then you you know you get to then help other people so you know your clients your customers from an organizational point of view or your friends family or whatever on a personal point of view so i you know i just think a, a, a values is so important to understand mm. and that can take some time to i guess unlock that and really find clarity in your values and i think every like you said earlier no one's perfect and I think it's it's a journey for one's self to take and to give themselves permission to take that journey to, to yeah. truly feel what's important to them. And as you said earlier, I mean, there's times in life where, you know, where you might have to be selfish because you've been selfless for so long. And a perfect yeah. example is if you're looking after someone all the time and you're always putting other people before yourself, it, it, it sometimes does come at a cost. So maybe that time it's time to rein it back a little bit. Maybe say no a little bit more than you're saying yes. Yeah. Check in with your self-care strategies and put yourself first for a while and then sort of rebalance that value wheel so that you can stay in that trajectory of that journey of your life. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I agree. And you, oh, sorry. No, you go, mate. You go. I was going to say, you know, you know, better than most people, right? So, it, you know, it, it is that and it's, it's so important. Again, it's not selfish to give yourself permission to consider what's important. It's mm. crucial. Yeah. Um, and anyone can do it. And I hear from like a lot of mums who once their kids leave home, they're like, oh, I don't know who I am anymore. I've just given everything to my kids, which is wonderful in one aspect, but it's also, you know, little irresponsible for yourself, for your own well-being. So, I mean, that's one mm-hmm. example. It happens with dads too, by the way. But, you know, um, it's, yeah, 
I, you know, it's a, it's a super, this is the beauty of it. It's so simple. Otherwise I couldn't talk about it. Mm. Um, it's just, it's a simple notion of looking after yourself, like mental, it's mental wellness. And, and mm. of course that's, you know, where we both kind of cross over, right? Totally, man. Totally. And with, with your list that I know that you started out with a, you know, with a hundred things and that's, that's what you created and it went into a book. Um, talk to me around your list. I know that you've, there's still a few on your list from what I, what I understand that you haven't, haven't knocked off yet. So to this date and, and 10 years since this has started around 10 years, you said, yeah. Um, 10 or so years. What, what's been your most liberating and fulfilling Ooh. bucket list item that you've ticked off your list? Um, well, and, and why I want to know why. Well, again, it's super cheesy. Like the one that made the biggest impact on me was helping, uh, helping someone. Number 26 was help a stranger. Mm -hmm. And by far it had the most yeah, profound shift in, in me. It, it changed the trajectory of everything. So I'd done all these other things, which were great by the way, but, um, it was the first time I ever contributed to someone else other than myself. And I was able to help a, uh, a guy called Mark, who, who's now become a good friend. He's a quadriplegic. He got Lyme's disease, got bitten by a tick, got Lyme's disease as an able-bodied person and then ended up in a wheelchair. It's horrible. Um, and uh, he can't speak. He can't move. It's horrible. And, yeah, he wanted to complete a half marathon. So I, and he asked me and to help. So I pushed him. And it was a great, it, the single greatest thing I've ever done in my life. And it was because I got to connect with someone else and I got to contribute in a small way to helping someone else achieve something meaningful. And I, it was like the higher, greater good. And it just changed everything for me. Um, and, you know, I think ultimately my list, a massive aspect of it is connection, you know. We all want to feel connected. It's so important. Um, I think the person I hadn't connected with initially was myself. And that's what a lot of the journey was. And, of course, helping other people, you connect directly with others. Um, Outside of that, in terms of just like, you know, very liberating and just to, you know, like much more lighthearted, I remember posing nude at an art class in New York. It was, you know, terrifying, but it was, I think you used the word liberating. It was super liberating. Um, living on that deserted island for a week was incredible. I'm not, it was near, just off the coast of New Caledonia, like 55 kilometers, I think, off the coast. And there were sharks circling every, every night. It was, I mean... It was nuts. Um, but every, uh -huh. I don't know, every time, this is what I think. I think every time someone achieves something meaningful, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be making a sandwich. It doesn't matter. As long as it's meaningful, and I suppose the other important word is relevant, if every time someone achieves a relevant and meaningful goal, they feel invincible. Like that feeling, if anyone listening just thinks of the last thing that they did that was really important to them, could be anything. Um, and you think about that for a second, and then you remember how you felt in that moment. That for me is living a purpose driven lifestyle. And mm. I feel like in those moments, you feel liberated, empowered, um, the master of the universe, you know, and, and that's how we should all be feeling. That's how yeah, we should all be feeling. And you, you feel a sense of calmness, I think, and a, and a lot of clarity. Yeah. Especially in those moments. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is, I mean, your, your list is, has got some, some really really crazy experiences through the ones that you know are, you know are nice and it'd be amazing to try them once in your life yeah what you're saying is for anyone to have a list you don't have to be someone that just goes and does these crazy scary things your list as long as it's fulfilling and it brings meaning or purpose into your life you should never ever compare that to somebody else's list because that's your yeah. list and that's your journey and that's that's what makes you tick and it's not about if it affects anyone else is that what you're saying absolutely okay absolutely for one person it's jumping out of a plane naked mm -hmm. for someone else it's hugging their dad i mean, and and everything else in between and outside of those parameters it's anything um you know you think about what what's an 18 year old want to do compared to what an 88 year old is going to want to do they're very different uh, maybe maybe not i just posted a video on social media i mean i think he was 84 his bucket list item was to reverse his car through his garage door. And he did it. Like, wow. completely smashed the garage door. So, I mean, maybe they are similar. <laughs> but no, it could be anything. I did a workshop. The reason I say the, the um, hugging my dad one is I did a workshop with a bank and uh, everyone shared their goals at the end of this workshop. And there was like skydiving and hiking Kilimanjaro. 
And then the GM, I think, of the bank stood up and said, I want to hug my dad. He started crying. And then everyone else started crying. And it's beautiful. Goals are completely re like relative. We're all different. We should, should never, I mean, everyone says it nowadays, but we should not compare. Um, it's very hard with social media to mm -hmm. do that. Totally. But you should compare. Whatever's important to you. Yeah. Whatever's important. And I, and I think the same is on the contrary as well. So if you're struggling and you feel that your issue is not as big as somebody else's and you don't want to speak up or share about it, you can't sit there and compare your struggle to someone else's because they're all very relative. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, I think that's very much the same in this case too. Yeah. I mean, I see it on your shirt, you know, it ain't weak to speak. And, and, and I, again, this is about communication, like with, with yourself, like don't ever be scared to have an internal conversation or a thought or explore that thought with someone else. That's it. It's, it's, I just feel like connection is key. And if you, if you start not, if you start kind of, you know, saying no to the things that really do light you up or that you're intrigued by it, you end up, I mean, where does that leave you? And it's where, where I was at 24. I just found myself at 24 having done various bits and pieces, but nothing that I wanted to do, just stuff that was thrown in front of me. So, yeah. Um, so what about, if you, what about if someone's listening right now and, and they, haven't, they haven't got to a stage where they've got a reactive moment in their life, similar to what you and I have both experienced with the loss yeah. of someone near and dear to our hearts yeah. that can make a difference in their own life so that they can start living happier? or healthier yeah. or better off what what's your advice because i i would love to unpack that and talk more about that so that people can listen and maybe take away some some more value add stuff here yeah well i think you know i mentioned it earlier i think you know being able to nut down into your values and create a list of meaning from that and like you know, again i do a lot of workshops around that and, and that makes sense for sure so that would be the bigger answer do something like that um but you can just really easily frame a question and just start thinking about it. You don't need to wait for a bad thing. If you're curious as to what that might be for you in terms of what your list, what your goals might be, here's a question. What could you, if nothing else mattered other than going to bed tonight with a smile on your face, what would you do? What would you do today? I mean, that's pretty simple. What would you do today to ensure that you go to bed feeling good tonight? Like for that dude, it's driving a car fast. <laughs> you know, like it's, and it could be anything. Again, it's, it's, it interestingly is usually around connection, family, friends, but for other people, it's not. Go for a walk, turn your phone off for half an hour. And I mean, that doesn't give you the, straight away the, you know, your bigger vision or doesn't it create your purpose per se, but action is such an important thing. How do you start a list? Well, you start it, you get a piece of paper and you get a pen and write something down that is meaningful and conjures up emotion for you. That's that. If uh, nothing, if no one knew what you, if social media didn't exist, no one knew what anyone else did on this planet, and that's just a given, no one knew, you couldn't even share what you did, what would you do? If money wasn't a thing, if you were the richest person in the world, if nothing was impossible, what would you do? What would you do? You know, and you can, there's a bunch of, you know, again, lots and lots of questions. What would you do for yourself? Is there someone in your life you could, you could do something for? Who is that person? What would you do? Um, you can break it down into what's a physical activity that you think would make sense? What's a challenge? What's a spiritual thing you'd like to do? We're all so different, but there are many aspects that combine us a lot. Again, in, the, in these workshops, you think about like your pillars of, I always like to think of it like a wheel. A wheel, I mean, I'm going to try and explain something that it takes a while. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if, if you think of a wheel and the spokes on the wheel and each one of those spokes is a pillar to your life. So essentially each spoke on this wheel is something that is really important to you as a pillar, something that you carry through your life. So, you know, um, career is one. Health and fitness is another popular one. Spirituality, education, faith for some people, adventure, humor, expression, creation, whatever those are. It's very different for everyone. But if you just take a moment now and just kind of think, huh, oh, what are those pillars in my life? Great start. And then the next question is, once you've got your two or three or four or five or 10 pillars, which ones are you actively giving attention to? So if health is on there and you're eating well and training every day or whatever, great, circle it. You've, you've, you've got that one nailed at the moment. But which are the ones more importantly that you're not giving attention to? Health funnily enough, is the one that's usually not. We all want to be healthy, but we all, 
you know, I, I, I had a chocolate croissant this morning. That's fine, but I've had a couple this week. You know, we're all kind of like not really doing everything we can be for all those folks. So it's just an interesting kind of thing. What are the pillars of your life? Which ones you're not giving attention to? If it's health, what could you do? What's a goal that would strengthen that spoke? Is it mm. stop eating chocolate croissants? That's a goal. Um, and that's how I think you get into it. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's, that's a very, it's, a very, uh, it's a very clear, simple way to look at it. For Definitely. sure. And it is simple. The whole premise is simple. What, that's it. How do we let, like, I don't know what the answer is to like, what's a successful life? What's the point of like, what's the, per- I don't know, but feeling good surely is the only thing, not but the what, only, but it should be the first thing that we can do. Yeah. And, but what happens, I mean, and, and I just want to throw out some, and not even so much as a devil's advocate, so to speak, but just, just for people, cause I've come across a lot of people in my life who They'd love to, to work on, you know, some of their really important spokes, you know, whether yep. it's health or fitness, whether it's family, whether it's uh, la- like relationships, whether it's career and, and meaning and purpose and that sort of stuff. They, they, they understand that it needs work, right? Yeah. But they, but they haven't been able to get there because they've got other obligations in their life already that are in place, which is almost stopping them yep. from, from, from sort of being flexible to go and try all these things and to pursue these things. And, and I get it. I've got, you know, my brother, for example, is a single dad. You know, he, he knows definitely deep down where he needs to focus some of his energies on so that he can create the life that he's set out to do mm. for his son, you know. But I know there's certain restrictions that have, you know, stopped him from achieving and doing things, whether it be moving, whether it be going on a new career path because it's security and what happens if it doesn't work then then my young son might not be better off you know what i mean so sure. where, where where can we draw that line with people that might be feeling stuck yeah it's a, such a good question yeah i mean i should say from the outset that there um oh my god i got a message <laughs> uh sorry <laughs> i don't know how to, I'm <laughs> to do my laptop i don't know how that silence even... said silence <laughs> <laughs> no. uh it's a really good question what I should say from the outset is you don't have to be extreme. It's not one or the other. You don't have to create a list like I did, say goodbye to everything else and go and you know chase that. You don't have to do that. You can very much incorporate little bits and pieces, little by little into your life based on your priorities. What really is important, you, as a, you know, your brother as an example, I'm just guessing but like you know looking at making sure that everything's set so his son has a great you know uh period of growing up and being educated and all that crucial absolutely crucial you can't turn your back on that obviously with that said it's just as important for your dad potentially to go and do a few other things that are more personal to him at the same time doesn't mean he has to go backpacking around europe for a year Mm. he can certainly incorporate little things that make him feel good enough so that he can give into his, you know, son's kind of needs or, mm. or what, what have you. So I think it's balance. I really do. There's, you know, you don't need to jump around the world and start a crazy list and da da da. But each goal that you have should be meaningful. Uh, it, it, it just should. Um, and even uh, if they're baby steps, is basically what you're saying. So they could be really small movements, but as long as they're in the in a, a front yeah. moving direction that are achieving things that are that are meaningful to you, means it's likely to have a positive impact on the people around you. Is what you're saying. Completely. I think any, any form of progress is good. Like again, with social media, we're led to believe that unless you have a million followers and you earn a million dollars a week, you're not good. It's rubbish. You just, any form of progress is good because it's, it's just a long journey that we're on. It doesn't all have to happen today. Mm-hmm. Um, and equally, here's another thing. This is kind of more like confronting, but we're entirely accountable for what we do in, in our lives. And we create the environments that we're in. If we don't like it, if, if whatever that environment is, and it's different for everyone, if we don't like an environment, change it. Like, it's as simple as that. And again, it's uh, whether it's professional, whether it's personal, whether it's a community thing, whether you're talking about where you're living or what you're doing or who you're interacting with, they're all kind of like external environmental things that we have 100% choice of. So that's just an, you know, I, I also hear from a lot of people like, well, my situation is this and this person thinks this and, you know, I'm, I'm having friction here at work because of this. Have a conversation, change something. You, we're, we're all as, as accountable as each other for what we're able to do in our lives. So although balance is key, you don't have to sprint off in a different direction. You know, conversely, sometimes you do have to do that or it is beneficial and you can do it. And, you know, 
uh, yeah, the conversation goes on and on and, on and yeah, super yeah. deep. But that, that's that's my thoughts on it, at least. And just one 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 more question on that topic because you've just mentioned a word there, which I, I brought up recently in a conversation around balance. I find this a bit of a tricky one. Now, I've got a couple of views in regards to balance simply because that's just, again, this is my interpretation of it, right? I feel balance is like being able to do things in a way that you feel balanced, right? Yeah. It, it's healthy, yeah, depending on the way you're interpreting it. But what yeah. happens if you're so in balance, you're not giving enough attention to the things that probably need more attention? You know what I mean? So, they, so essentially... Right. If you're out of balance, you're you're probably giving too much to something. Does that make sense? But yeah, what about sure. but but what about if you need to give more to something so that for you're out of balance? Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of. I I think like I think as people we all, we do that a lot too. If we find progress in one area, we'll double down, triple down on that thing, and we'll become very obsessed with that area of progress. Okay. Meaning that we forget about other things. Yeah. And I think, again, it comes down to accountability. If you have the awareness, which is the first thing, um, that, you're, you know, that you're letting something else go, it's a choice. Okay, cool. What is that thing I think I need to be balancing more? Mm -hmm. And then go and do it. Because you can't, you know, if you've got, going back to your pillars, if you've got eight pillars or whatever, it's hard to have them all spinning perfectly at the same Perfect. time. Exactly. You do have to run around. So, again, the idea is that you can't, of course, put 100% of your energies perfectly distributed between everything sometimes you do have to you know again maybe using your brother as an example maybe he's like so into looking after his son and doing all the things that he may i'm making this up by the way but yeah, he yeah. may feel that he is not doing anything of a personal nature or he may feel that he's not working as hard as he needs to be um because he's got so much time here with his son i'm again creating things that may may not exist probably don't but as soon as you have that awareness okay i do need to put time there i do need to put time and energy there do it. Do it. Wait, I mean, this is a, uh, just a random thought that came in my head. <laughs> Another question I get heaps is, it's usually in a, a Q&A, and someone will say, um, it's okay for you. You know, you're, you're, I'm single. Like, you know, I, I kind of do my own thing, I guess. It's okay for you because of those things, right? What about me? I can't get up and do whatever I want to do. So I, I hear it. That person feels that they're not, pursuing or progressing in a direction that they'd like. Uh -huh. I'll then say, okay, great. Thank you for sharing. Um, wh what is it that you want to do? What, what's the thing that you want to do that you're, you know, you're sort of suggesting you're not able to, and they'll go usually, Oh, I have no idea. I'm just sort of saying that. I can. So often we'll also put <laughs> obstacles and reasons why we can't achieve stuff before we even know what it is we want to achieve. So true. So it's the that's awareness. True. If you're aware of what you're not doing or what you'd like to be doing, um, that's the first thing. And then it's, yeah, you can reshuffle. You really can reshuffle. We've got so much time in a week. We have so much time in a week. It, whether you have kids or whether you don't have kids, you have the same amount of time. Obviously, kids require a lot of time. But, yeah, we create the obligations around ourselves. And, you know, with that said, it's a beautiful thing. Some things require a lot more energy and time from us, of course, but it doesn't mean to say that you don't have room and wiggle room elsewhere. It's just, it's yeah, just and, and and things and and the and again the way I'm interpreting it is if you've got balance, I mean that balance can go in and out of balance on a day to day basis. It might go in and out of balance every week. It might yeah. it might be hourly, you know. It might be daily, it might be monthly, but everyone's interpretation of balance is unique to them and what is on their balancing wheel, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, I mean, again, my example is this. I uh, okay, so I've been working heaps over the last kind of like probably a month, well, a couple of months really, really doubling down. I keep saying doubling down, really get going deep, working a lot. Sort of let my health slide a little bit. Not so bad, but like I'm, you know, I'm just not doing, I'm surfing a lot, which is great, but I'm not, you know, I'm kind of like, I had a chocolate croissant this morning, which I keep bringing up. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> you want another yeah. one. You want another one, don't you, Sevi? I actually do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, so I'm, I'm aware that, right, work stuff's fantastic doing all these things uh all right probably need to do a bit more health so it's just like what do i it's a simple decision okay stop eating croissants and go for a run you know whatever that is um yep. it's that simple yeah definitely and and we're all held accountable as you said and i agree i do agree and i think we've all got responsibility to ourselves yeah um to be accountable i think it's very important and i feel if if anyone's listening that might be falling down the rabbit hole 
definitely take uh, some of these tips and tricks into their own life and trial them out for themselves because I do believe that they could work. Um, yeah. But it's worth trialing for sure. What's yeah. been your um? What's been your scariest, scariest, I uh, guess, item on the list? Oh, from the list, scariest. Um, well, my my list is kind of all that trying to get out of my comfort zone. So mm-hmm. everything pretty much evokes fear. Um, uh, so a really immature one was, you know, I wanted to like kiss a celebrity, and um, I'm is that am I alone? Have that has that ever crossed your mind? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone. Yeah, anyway, but that was on my list, and I remember the way in which it happened. I was petrified. I basically was at a conference speaking. The person in front, the person speaking before me was Sharon Osbourne, uh, oh. um, and and, uh, and obviously that's kind of what happened. I had to like put my hand up in the middle of the talk and say, Sharon, I have a list of a hundred things. Number <laughs> five is to kiss a celebrity. I think it's sixty-five. Would you consider it? And she said, "Yes, get your get your ass on stage," is what she said. And I just I went into a different dimension. I was oh, so my. scared, so scared. Uh, and then went down on stage, and we ended up yeah. kicking. And wow! How do you handle that situation, mate? <laughs> well, that's the thing. So this is an so it's a good question. <laughs> How did I handle it? I was petrified. Petrified. I was sweating. I was sweating bullets as I was walking down on the stage. <laughs> I felt like I wasn't, I was just, I, I wasn't me. I was out of body. I mean, I really, it was weird. And I just remember going, getting to the stage, finding myself on the stage. And then I thought in my head, internal conversation, I just need to get my face near her face because she's open to it. And then I'll just let her do that. So I kind of like just thought about it logistically so I just sort of bent over and like walked like a duck over to her and uh, she she then grabbed my face and and stuck a tongue down my throat bit my lip bit uh, my lip was bleeding afterwards um so that's how I did it because the perception from the outside was I got emails going oh you're fearless amazing wow only you could do that absolutely not true like it's what we I have all the fears and apprehensions and you know, feeling of anxiety or doubt, self doubt and all that sort of stuff that runs that, through your yeah. mind, overthinking. Yeah. What if she says no? What are the people around me going to do? Are they going to laugh? Are they going to bag me out? Are they going to belittle me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All those and self worth. Am I worthy? I don't, I don't, you know, all, all the things we all have it. And, and I think just an important point is we all have it. It's just how we deal with it. It's just how we deal with it. And, and ultimately it's very hard to break a cycle of not, going out there to chase a goal. It's very hard to break a cycle of not thinking about yourself. All these things will end you in a, lead you to a place where you will need to break through. How do you break through? You just do it. You just do it. You just take one stride in the direction. And, and commit to it. Yeah, and the rest happens. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So how, <laughs> many, how, many, how many more uh, items on the list? Well, I've got 28 on my original list. Yeah, on the 100? Um, yeah. The list is more like it def, you know, it appeals to me 10 years ago. Yep. So, the, you know, the remaining things on there are, you know, like uh, catch a thief, be, do an Olympic ski jump, be in a Hollywood film. Um, like you I saw that one, mate. I saw yeah. that one. You might, that, that might come true. You're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never know. You never know. Um, yeah. And like, they're all cool things, like for sure. Uh, they still kind of intrigue me, but they're not my driving force anymore. I, yeah, totally. you know, I'd much rather help if I could, you get into a Hollywood film or anyone else do something else, you know, um, that for sure lights me up. Um, but yeah, 28 unticked items from my list. Well, that's all right. I mean, and, and there's, and it, you've got a lifelong journey ahead of you and I know that you're living life till it's fullest and that's your mantra with everything that you do for purpose and, and everything else that comes with it. Mm. That being said, you're also involved in a, in another startup, um, to do good for the community called Kindsome. Yeah. It's a, what's that? The peer to peer kindness yeah. platform matching up people who need kindness with people who want to give kindness. Is that correct? That's it. That's absolutely it. I mean, it's just kind of like an evolution of a hundred things. And, you know, I think the idea is when you've looked after yourself, you find yourself in a position where you can help others. And it, it happened with me, list, 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 things I did, did, did. And then I ended up helping Mark, um, you know, with the half marathon. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and I found that to be amazing. Um, and, I, and I got to help someone. And uh, from that moment, I started getting a lot of people approach me wanting help. I tried to help everyone I could. I couldn't help everyone. But, well, how do I change this? So then I started getting a bunch of emails from other people saying, hey, um, we, uh, we see you help people. 
do you know anyone that we can help? So I just started manually matchmaking people who needed help and people who wanted to help. And that was, the, I guess, like the first step into this idea that, huh, I could create an online dating site, but instead of dating, it's kindness. It's online kindness matchmaking. So that's the premise of, as you say, what is kindsome? It's, uh, I don't know if it's a startup. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's live. And if there are people who need help, they go there and they say, I need help with this. Uh, or people nominate others that they know. Hey, my sister or whatever, my best friend. I just met a guy who's homeless and he just wants some food, whatever it is. Uh, and you populate on a map. Uh, and then if you just want to be kind and you're looking to do something good, you can go there and search your location and see who's around and, you know, contact them directly. So Amazing, man. It's such a good idea. I, I Thank you. I, I mean, well, not thank you. I, well, thank you, yeah. But it's just a thing. I think it's like, I just think it's needed. I just think it's needed. And, and the stories are beautiful. There have been so many amazing things that have happened from dogs finding forever homes on the day they're meant to get put down in an overpopulated doggy pound um, to a war veteran in the US here recently just got relocated. At, I can't remember, from... from um, Utah to Colorado Springs. He just had no money. Him and his family needed to relocate. Just over like, the course of a week, someone donated a truck for the to uh, borrow that this guy's own truck. Two drivers who drove the whole way. People to be able to fly the the drivers of the truck back. People to pack the truck and unpack it at the other end. All through kindness. So amazing things have happened. We're currently trying to find a kidney for someone who needs a kidney for a girl called Shana. And um, yeah, I you know look. I think the implications or the I think the possibilities are endless, like on a, on a you know, peer-to-peer -peer kindness. I just think it's where it's at. I just think that non for uh, what I think happens in charity is that it becomes so organisational or organisationally driven that it takes away from the people. And it's hard sometimes to get in there and help or it's even hard to go in there and be helped by a charity. Mm. So the idea is that you sort of reduce the barriers as much as you can, but whilst maintaining safety, obviously. Um, and allow people to connect with each other directly. So it's sort of grassroots up. Yeah, I love and that. Yeah, in and outside of organisations, I think that the possibilities are endless and that's it. That's kind of what I'm committed to. That's my, you know, if, if, if I was going to, this is another way to frame a question we spoke about earlier for anyone interested in really considering what they want to do. If you're going to die in a year, what would you do? Mm -hmm. If I was going to die in a year, um, I wouldn't change a thing right now. I'd be chatting to you. It's awesome. And I would then, uh, I'm about to get off this after the, uh, we're done. I'm going to work on a deck that I'm working on to, on, on Kindsome. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. That's it. That's what I care about. I love it, mate. I love the energy. I love the passion, uh, the commitment to the space of helping others um, and giving back to communities, I guess, to, to empower people to change their own life because it essentially is like a ripple effect as well. Yeah. Well, there is nothing else. It's just people. It's just your mind and other people's minds and yeah, that's, that's it. And when you skin everything back, you know, all the materialistic items and all the, the things that people overthink and get doubts and, and all that stuff that builds up in people's minds that stops a lot of people chasing their passions and dreams, I believe. Yeah. I mean, take all that stuff back. We're all human beings and that's the beauty of it, I guess. What's um, throughout your journey, obviously we are coming to a pretty close on this on the show shortly but there's obviously been times in your own life said where you've struggled or you know you maybe you've doubted yourself or maybe the this this whole journey that you're on now post you know your friend passing away when you're 24 25 years of age how have you handled that and what did you do to handle those situations where you've struggled um well i i think you know community is a big one right i you know I've got to say that my that there hasn't been too much jeopardy at, at generally speak, speaking with me. I've been very fortunate. I've committed to this, and the, the journey's pretty much been, you know, it's it it's been very conducive to a lot of really lovely things. So I feel really good in myself. With that said, like everyone else, there are times when I'm feeling lonely. There are times when I have like imposter syndrome. There are times I don't feel worthy or clever enough or enough generally. And I think on a lot of those, I think on a, a lot of the, the solutions to most of those, if not all of those, is connecting with, with people who are good and who are in your corner. 
whether it's a friend, whether it's a family member, whether it's a therapist, by the way, this is like such a big thing over here in the U S everyone does it coming from Australia. No one does it. I've mm. always been intrigued. So I actually, I've, I started seeing a therapist, which I, I know sounds to an Australian audience quite, Oh my God, poor guy seeing a therapist, but it's such a proactive, productive thing to do to help sort through that. I mean, no, not that I've, I don't think I've ever actually said that I've been doing Amen. it for a year and it's Amen to really, that, yeah. Um, so, you know, so I think, talk, but again, forgetting whether it's a therapist or what the labels are, it's connection. It's just connecting with people who support and can help you filter through things. And that can be a friend. It can be a therapist. It could be anything. So that's often what I come back to. Moving to LA, I didn't really know anyone. And so I felt quite lonely for a while. And then with, you know, venturing into the business world, as I am now with Kindsum and 100 Things and all the, you know, the things that are on the horizon, getting into organizations and all these magnificent ideas. Oh, I needed to like ground myself. I needed to feel good in myself. So I thankfully now three years on have a good community. I've got good friends and we, you know, just uh, overlapping values, blah, blah, blah. So that's good. But then even for Kindsum, like I lack so many business, um, I don't even know how to term it. I, so many business things that you need to, be, you know, to, to strategize, to prioritize, to think about finance. Like I did rubbish with all that. So again, I've just decided to bring on a business partner um, to help me. It's all about connection. This guy um, is going to come on board and I just need the help. So I've had to go be vulnerable in a sense and be like, look, I can't do this alone. Would you mind helping me? And he's super excited. And so again, together, uh, through connection, professional connection, uh, we're going to try and advance that. So a very roundabout, long-winded way of saying whenever I face some kind of feeling of loneliness or I don't feel very empowered or I want to do something but I can't do it and I feel useless, it's about connection. Mm, and asking for help and not being not being afraid of asking for help because I think at the end of the day, like you just said it perfectly then, you know, you want to scale that your, your operations there so that you can help more people. Yeah. And, and, and enact more change. So in order to yeah. do that, you need to scale it. So for you to do that, not just on your own, because you probably wouldn't be able to, you yeah. need to take a step back, be a little bit vulnerable and say, come on guys, I'm going to welcome you in and then sort of grow it out that way. Because you're going to have strengths that this new person who's coming in is not going to have, and they're going to have strengths that you don't have. And that's yeah. how you can collaborate. And, I, and I'm the same, mate. I, I, I feel with all walks of life, whether it's seeing a therapist going to the you know, going to a personal trainer or hanging out with people on the weekend, connection is the most, one of the single most important things that we must take advantage of and, and find in our life as a priority. Completely. Um, I, was, I was watching a talk of yours the other day, actually, and, uh, and you said it, something about, I can't remember exactly what you said, but I think it was in relation to corporates, the most important asset of people, your people. I think you said something like that. Mm. Um, and I, I agree. It, it, it really is. And I think just one thing I'd love to add is, there's a uh, thing around asking for help that we don't like doing it. We don't want to say, hey, I need help over here. It's, it's, it's kind of like very un-Australian almost, you know. Um, and just generally anywhere in the world, it's a, we see it as a sign of weakness. And, and it's not. It, it's incredibly brave to say, right, I love myself enough to, to ask for help because this thing, whatever it is, is important enough. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, when someone asks for help, in my opinion, they create an opportunity that was never there before, they create an opportunity for someone else to connect with them. And so this person over here connects with them, helps them achieve whatever, but they've also allowed connection. So it's like mm. a win-win. It's a win-win. And, and that's the whole thing with asking for help. It's not weak. It's brave. It's important. It's beautiful. Creating opportunities for other people to be good because un fundamentally that's why we're here, to connect. And it's a growth mindset. It's the same thing you do if your business, for example, let's just say it is struggling or someone's business is struggling, they reach out to a consultant, for example, for help, or they'll speak to their accountant or their advisor to come in and have a look at the books to see what they can tighten up, to see what they can let go of. Yeah. And that's asking for help so that the business can thrive. We've got to start treating our minds the same way, if not better, because it's more important. And if we look at it from the, from the inside out, it's only going to positively affect all other areas of our life, family, relationships, yeah. um, career, all that yeah. sort of great stuff. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't agree more. We, I, someone said to me recently, like, you, you know, we spend money to go to a gym or whatever and, you know, exercise our, our muscles and our physical selves. But, like, the, everything emanates from, like, your mind, everything. Mm -hmm. And so why on earth would you not allow someone 
to why would you not be desperate to find someone to help you like just position things and frame things and understand how this works so that this can be as powerful and potent as possible you know it's just it's a no-brainer for me yeah it definitely is and that's why uh you guys are all listening to the it ain't week to speak podcast right now with sebastian terry i uh, said where can where can everyone find you where where do, where do people know how to find you um, well, I mean, you could, you know, go, uh, social media, easy, go to at Seb 100 things, 100 things, uh, for my hundred things stuff. The kind some stuff is K I N D S U M on social media and you know, the website's kindsome.com, hundred things.com that are you, um, yeah, get in touch. <laughs> and what, what we'll also add there is we're going to, we're creating a Facebook group, obviously. So all of I'll get some details and everything will be put in the show notes, guys, so that you guys can follow Seb's journey, uh, like his things, engage, reach out, ask for help. You've heard it from the man himself. Um, it's been great chatting with you, mate. Uh, if you've got any any information, I'll disperse it along the Facebook group too so that Thank people you, can connect directly as well. Um, and bef- I want to ask one last thing before we close, before, before we wrap up the show. Sure. What's one piece of advice you can give to someone right now who's listening that might be that might be a bit lost? Um, stop everything. Immediately find a bit of paper and a pen and just write one thing that is important to you, one goal that would be important to you, and commit to doing it. That's it. Commit to doing it. Love it, man. Love it. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're the man. I love your work. I love you doing a podcast. This is great. I really hope this is helpful for even just one person. Absolutely, mate. It will be, no doubt. I cannot wait to share this episode with our listeners. It's going to be an absolute value add for a lot of people in all walks of life. Thank you very much, Seb, for your time. Uh, I'm very, very honored and grateful to have met you in in such a short short space of time, but I'm, I'm very excited for whatever the future holds, man. Absolutely. Straight back at you, buddy. Um, thank you. Thank you, mate. Have, an, have a lovely day and we shall speak soon. All right. Cheers. Uh-huh.